Remove the uh, damaged LCD on the Harmony One and now we're ready to install the replacement LCD. There's a few things we have to do to prep before we start soldering. And the uh, first thing we need to do is remove the mounting bracket from the old LCD because we're going to reuse this piece. And it just pulls right off. And we need to alter the bracket so that both legs or about the same length. So you can cut right behind the little mounting tab there. This doesn't have to be exact, we're just making this about the same length so that it doesn't interfere with the ribbon cable on the new module. Then we need to alter the module a little bit. There's two very, very small little nibs at the top corners. These are typically used to go into guide holes on a mounting bracket so that it fits without having to eyeball it. You can see on the old bracket they would have gone there. But because this is not OEM size, it will not mount into those holes. So we need to remove these so that this double stick tape will sit flush with the bracket once we put the module on. So to take off these nibs, you can just pop them right off with an X-Acto blade, and that's it. Now we're ready to actually do some soldering. So I'm going to lay down a bead of paste flux, and I'm going to remove the cover on the double stick tape on the module. This will help hold the module down to the board. And then I'm going to use two toothpicks to align the holes on the module with the holes on the board. And that's exactly what they're there for. This will align your leads perfectly to the pads on the board. And then press down gently so that the tape adheres to the board. That's it. Okay, so we're ready. Uh, I've got my iron set to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using a 1 16th bit. I'm gonna put on the fume extractor so it'll be a little louder. I use this solder helper tool just to press down onto the leads as I solder. I'm gonna do probably two leads at a time. We shouldn't get any bridging because of the flux, and if we do, we'll simply swipe again to remove any solder bridges we see. It's very fast. I'm going to clean my bit a couple of times. I'll remove these now because we don't need them in our way any longer. And we'll finish up and that's beautiful work. Here we go. Now your solder leads <coughs> And your solder work should look very similar to this. If you see lifted pads, burned pads, or incomplete joints, you used a tip that was too narrow, or you used too much heat, you dwelled on the leads too long, what, any one of those things. You didn't use enough flux. So this is what it's supposed to look like. And so inspect carefully. Also check to see if you see any bridges. If you do see any, you can just swipe again with your, um, with your solder pencil, uh, add a little more flux, and you'll be fine. So all I'm going to do now is clean away some of that flux residue with a little bit of alcohol. And now, you can actually just fold the module up 
And if you like, you can hold a battery to the terminals and just check to see if the module powers on correctly and boots. You can check for rendering. And everything looks great. Okay. So now comes one of the trickier parts. It's, it's not hard to do, but you need to align the module so that it's relatively square. So first, we'll put the bracket in. That just gets pushed down. Those tabs lock on the other side. You should check to make sure that it's flush with the board and that one of them isn't hanging up. You can also turn it around to check to make sure that all four mounting tabs are in their holes completely. And now we're going to peel up this double stick tape, the covers, and to position this, we're not going to press down hard at first. We're just going to fold it up and let it rest where it lands, trying to center it by eye. And then we'll look carefully. Looks pretty good. I'm going to take the arrows on the sides and place them there, which will also help me to see if the reveals on the edges are close to the same. And they are. So I think we're good. And I'm going to press down a little more. I'm going to press on the arrows. And that will lock them in. And you should check to see if the legs have gone all the way through and aren't hanging halfway. Remember, they, there was an order, left to left and right to right. And that looks pretty good. The last thing we want to put on there, which you got in your installation kit, is just something to help block the light from this little LED when the when the remote is put back together. If you don't have this, it doesn't really matter. It's just a cosmetic issue. Some people find it objectionable that you can see the inside of the remote from the light of that LED. So just pushing this little thing in here and that's fine. Now what I'm going to do also is I'm going to just place this in the front cover just to do an alignment check and make sure everything looks good. And that looks pretty good. I see a little bit of silver at the bottom, a little bit of silver at the top, and those lines look pretty parallel. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to remove the tape. Catch my off button that was trying to escape. Make sure that this guide pad is on correctly. This rectangular guide should be on the right. If it's on the left, it's upside down. And press, make sure. Sometimes these things can be uh, put in backwards or because you cleaned and then you forgot to how it went in. This just rests nicely in there. Make sure your post came through. I will put in the two smaller, shorter screws in the bottom.
and I'm going to peel up this tape again here. And we're going to insert the touchscreen cable and very gently and slowly close the ZIF connector. Hold the tape on. All right. Grab your back cover. Align. And push. And push and push. And then come around and check for any tabs that didn't catch and push. Looks good. Looks good. You can install your seven screws, put your label back, snap on the soft touch cover. That goes on like this. Starting at the top, push it in, then just, and again, check the sides. And you squeeze and push to get all the side clips in. And you can feel it. All right, let's put a battery in and see what it looks like. Big difference. <laughs> and that's it, folks. If you have any questions or you need any assistance, just reach out to us at info at harmonyremoterepair.com. We're always happy to help.